Unmixed with grief, what glory endures immovable on earth. All things are feebler than shadows, more elusive than dreams. In a single moment, all are supplanted by death. But in the light, O Christ, of your countenance and the sweetness of your beauty, Grant rest to the one you have taken like a true friend of man. Μάθε ότι στα ανθρώπινα όσα ουκ υπάρχει με τα θάνατον, που παραμένει ο πλούτος ου συνοδεύει η δόξα, mm. επελθόν γαρ ο θάνατος τα αυτά πάντα εξυφάνιστε, διό Χριστό το αθανάτο βασιλεί βοήσωμεν, Τη μεταστάσαν έξι μόναν άπαυσον, εν τα πάντων εστί εφραίνομένον η κατοικία.
Εμνήστην του προφήτου βόντος εγώ ημι γη και σποδός και πάλιν κατενόησα εν της μνήμασι και είδον τα οστά τα γεγυμνωμένα και είπων άρα τι εστί βασιλεύσι στρατιώτης η πλουσίος υπένης η δίκαιος η αμαρτωλός αλλά ανάπευσον Κύριε με τα δικαίων την δόλην σως φιλανθρωπός. Rest, O Savior and giver of life, to our sister whom you have taken from temporal things, as she cries, glory to you. I weep and I lament when I come face to face with death, and when I see lying in the grave the beauty fashioned for us in the image of God, disfigured without glory, all its form destroyed. How strange indeed that this lamentable mystery should happen to us. How were we given to corruption, and how did we become partnered with death? It as written by the command of God, who grants to all the departed eternal rest. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The death which you endured, O Lord, has become the harbinger of deathlessness. If you had not been laid in your tomb, then would not the gates of paradise been open. Wherefore to her, now God from us give rest, for you are the friend of mankind. Both now and forever and to the ages of ages, amen. O oh, pure virgin, the word's holy gate, and our God's mother, we entreat and we ask that mercy be given unto her soul.
is from the first epistle of the Holy Apostle Paul to the Thessalonians. Brethren, we would not have you ignorant concerning those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, shall not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first, then we who are alive, who are left, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. Peace be to you, reader. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Peace be with all and with your spirit. Reading is from the Holy according to John. Glory to you, O Lord, glory to you. The Lord said to the Jews who came to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. Truly, truly, I say to you, the hour is coming, and now is. The dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself, and has given him authority to execute judgment, because he is the Son of do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming when all who are in the tombs will hear his voice and come forth, those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of judgment. I can do nothing on my own authority as I hear, I judge, and my judge. As I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. Glory to you, O Lord. Glory to you. Have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Grant this, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. At this point, my beloved, it is my privilege as a bishop to offer a prayer for the general absolution of the Virgin and the departed loved ones. O Lord, our God, in your inexpressible wisdom, you created man out of the earth giving him form and adorning him with beauty, 
precious and heavenly being, to the praise and honor of your glory and kingdom, make you into your own likeness. But when man violated your commandment and did not preserve the image you set them, you gave him an end, so that his evil state should not endure forever, in your love for mankind, you ordered that this mixture and blend and the unbroken bond that you had established, O God of our fathers, should by your will be severed and dissolved and that the soul should proceed until the general resurrection to the place from where it received its being, and that the body should be dissolved into the elements from which it was made. Therefore we pray to you, O Father, without beginning, and to your only begotten Son, and your all-holy and consubstantial and life-creating Spirit, do not forsake this good creature, that it be swallowed up in destruction, but cause her body to dissolve into its the soul to the company of the righteous. Yes, Lord our God, let your immeasurable mercy and your incomprehensible love for mankind prevail. And if your servant nor me have fallen under the curse of father or mother, brother or sister, being embittered any of the curse that you directed by circumstances, the bond from which you was not released, negligence or lazy. Give her through me to your faithful and unwilling servant, dissolve her body into the elements from which it was composed, and assign her soul to the dwelling place of the saints. Yes, Lord our God, who gave this authority to your holy disciples and apostles to grant remission of sins, saying to them, whatever you bind or loose on earth, that it be bound or loosed in heaven, and who through them have in your love transmitted this great gift to us, though we are not worthy of it. Loose your servant, Maureen Marina, who has fallen asleep from all her sins of soul and body. Let her be forgiven within the present age and in the age to come. This we ask through the intercessions of your all-pure and ever-virgin mother, and of all your saints. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God of spirits and of all flesh, who has trampled down death, crushed the power of the devil, and granted life, life to you all. To you yourself, the Lord, give the rest of the soul of your servant, Marina, who has fallen asleep in a place of light, a place of green pasture, a place of repose, where there is no sweet sorrow or mourning. Forgive every sin which is committed, word or deed or thought, for you are a good God, of love and kind. For there is no one who lives and does not sin. Only you are without sin. Your righteousness is everlasting righteousness, and your word is true. For you are the resurrection, the life, and the repose of your servant Marina, who has fallen asleep, O Christ, with our God. And to you we ascribe glory, together with the beginning of the Father, and your holy and life given spirit, now and ever, for the ages Amen. Glory to you, O God, our hope. Glory to you. May Christ, our true God, who rose from the dead and has dominion over the living and the dead as immortal king, through the intercessions of his most pure and holy mother, of the holy, glorious, and all-praised apostles, of our holy and God-bearing fathers, of the holy and glorious forefathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, of his holy and righteous friend Lazarus, who was four days in the tomb, and of all the saints, assigned to the dwelling place of the righteous, the soul of his servant, Maureen Marina, who has departed from among us, Amen. grant her rest in the bosom of Abraham. Amen. And number her among the righteous. Amen. And we also have mercy on us and save us. And gave to this God who loves mankind. Amen. And your memory be eternal, our ever blessed and ever memorable sister, Eunia Suimnimi Axiomakariskos Kea Ingliskos May your memory be eternal, our ever blessed and ever memorable sister. Eonia.
preeminence, fathers, Michael, Angel, Mikey, all in the family. It is a sacred time for all of us that knew Maureen. Sacred time since her soul is on the way to the Lord. Sacred time since the Metropolitan, the priest, and the layman who knew Maureen are in prayer to the merciful Lord to receive her kind soul in his kingdom. All of us are praying since she was always serving here in the church at this location and on Blame Avenue where the old church used to be. She was working in the kitchen, cooking, serving, welcoming, and serving the Lord, the parishioners, the guests, whoever would come to All Saints. We all remember Maureen in the church hall and at Angel's Acres with an apron on, with a warm smile and a welcoming and caring expression on her face. She was the same serving and caring person here in the All Saints and at Angel's Acres. Her mother-in-law had the name and the generosity of the angels, but I could also say that Maureen was the serving angel, full of joy, with her compassionate love for Angel's Acres, the church, and her home. Maureen, for the majority of time that I was in Kennesburg, was the first lady since her husband Michael was president of the First Council, if I'm not mistaken, since 1985 on, until I left in 1889. We remember Maureen's constant help in the kitchen for the annual food festival. She was the leading person who ran the kitchen during the festival. She was hardworking and worked all the hours of the festival. She was also Sunday school teacher in those days, and also Goya advisor. She had great zeal and was very much engaged in the faith. My son, Father Eustathios, remembers when Maureen was teaching Sunday school in her class, in his class, he learned many things from her, but the one that stands out is during the fasting period of fasting day. She said, if you are eating something that is non-fasting because you forgot, and the minute you remember, just stop eating that non-fasting food. A detail. I was impressed that she, he was remembering. As my Goya advisor, I remember back in mid and late 80s that she was reading about the New Age movement and what damage it can cause, especially to young people, because of this new information which could directly impact the souls of our young ones, we had a talk with our Goyans on the New Age movement. Uh, well, Michael, her husband, uh, was and is always friendly, smiling, welcoming. I need to say the most popular individual at All Saints was Maureen. <laughs> she was not only popular with the parishioners of All Saints, but also with the the Cannesburg community at large. If she would run for the mayor of Cannesburg, I believe she would have easily won. <laughs> we 
Why was Maureen so popular that everyone loved, admired, and respected her? Maureen was down to earth, attentive to young and old, and cared very much for the All Saints community. In other words, she was virtuous, godly, spiritually disciplined. She had faithful Christian with values and principles of the Christian faith. I remember in those days, and I understand if um, the late Father George uh, would be here, he would be the most appropriate to talk. But I remember and I recall when we were here in those days with my six children, she would mention often to my presbytera and I to please bring the children to Angel's Acres. We would go. It was not only the invitation, but the way she would invite. There at Angel's Acres, we would receive the most generous hospitality. My children have fond memories of Maureen. Some of their comments are, always had a smile on her face and always were, was wearing an apron. She would brighten the room when she entered. She was always caring and made us feel comfortable. She had a warm, welcoming presence. We didn't have family nearby, and she always made us feel like family and made Angel's Acres our second home. She always cared for all of us and fed us well at Angel's Acres. We will never forget the love she had for us. Christ said, let the children come to me. But that was also Maureen's way of inviting my children and other children in the community, showing true Christian hospitality. My son, Nico, said that some of my favorite memories of Mumu always started with her wonderful smile. As a child, I appreciated how kind and thoughtful she was to my brother and I whenever we visited the Custurises to play with Mikey. For instance, one snowy day, we went sledding down the hill from the house towards Angel's Acres. My brother overshot the end a bit and added into the cold pond. <laughs> Very funny, but more importantly, we had hot cocoa waiting for us when we went inside. I know this may seem small, but this ordinary recollection of friends playing together for hours and then enjoying a chocolate treat is a golden memory which will never be forgotten. Much of my childhood was in Kennersburg and included the Casturis family in so many ways. And Mumu was always there welcoming with her gentle smile. I was driving coming this morning up and he called me and said, make sure you say to uh, Michael and to Angel and to Mike how much we appreciated the hospitality. They treated us like their own children. We not only had meals in their homes, but also when they were going out. And I, this I didn't know. When they were going out for dinner, they would always have us together with them. Maureen also encouraged a few persons, as well as myself, to go and visit family, old couples in Kennersburg who were very poor. You may not know this. 
these people were not from the Greek community, but from the city of Kennersburg, whom she felt needed help. And I think she was communicating with the Salvation Army, with uh, some charitable organizations to find out who were those old couples and families that were uh, deprived. Truthfully, this was my first time to see such poverty in America. Maureen would supply me with different foods to take to their homes, and they were very grateful and with tears in their eyes for the generous gestures and donations. These elderly persons, forgotten by many, were astonished that the All Saints community was attending to their needs and remember them. It was a very devoted wife and the most dedicated mother and grandmother. Michael, her children, the grandchildren adored her and honored her with the love and attention she deserved. And it showed, especially during the last three years, of her having ALS as Ligerig's disease. Whatever was needed, it was made available to her from her beloved husband and children. I found out from Angel Muriel, who was staying in the house and helped her help very much. Last summer, when Maureen was struggling to speak, she also came for confession. She was mentioning her weaknesses, but what I remember, I remember, and it impressed me so much, was her sincerity and tears. She would confess her smallest of sins that men don't bother with, but what an honest confession and repentance. <clears throat> Maureen was a very generous soul. Maureen and the Kasturis family were instrumental in acquiring the new land of 11.3 acres for this new All Saints location here and making sure that every step was taken precisely with this new development. Many meetings were held to plan for this new land, to present the plans and the request to uh, Metropolitan Maximus for his approval and receive his blessings. All these meetings took place mainly at Angel's Acres with the Paris Council and those who wanted to be involved. And I maybe could recall uh, the Ceruses, the Pankinses, um, a lot of individuals that were not serving on the Paris Council, but they were there to help. We met on the porch of Angel Sakers and had fond memories of Maureen drinking different drinks, asking everyone if she would do, she would uh, bring anything more hors d'oeuvres and even um, serve dinner and a meal to all of us. Whatever the church was planning, she was always supportive and helped the outcome. Decisions were taken from paying off the land, developing the architectural renderings, and of course, later on, breaking ground for the new church, in addition to hiring an iconographer until the church was completely built. The family showed the sacrificial love they had for the Lord in having the parishioners involved 
engaged and inspired to build the church on the new land. Michael Sr. also built St. Michael's Chapel in Angel's Acres, and he had no hesitation to write that land and to donate the chapel to the metropolis as advised by Metropolitan Maximus. I remember yet the discussion we had. The chapel was de designed after an old cathedral in Rhodes. Marine's family was always supported, supportive and contributing to this very, very generously. Also, Maureen donated the first 10 acres that was given for the new Metrop Metropolis Center. This was given with all her heart and with the support of everyone in the family. This only proves their love for the Lord, for the All Saints, for St. Michael's, and for our sacred metropolis of Pittsburgh. Throughout her illness, she always had a smile on her face. At the end, when she was in hospice and at home, she was very good with all in the family, and especially the grandchildren. They would ask her how she was, and she would give them a thumbs up. She couldn't drink or sip of water, talk, not eat, but she always had a smile on her face as long as she was sitting next to her husband, Michael. That was the light of her eyes. And the same with Michael. In 2022, Archbishop Elpido Foros came to the All Saints in Kennersburg to see Father George Lifanos, who was sick and elevated him to the rank of Proto-Presbyter. At the request of Metropolitan Savas, Archbishop Elpido Foros with Father George Lifanos went to the Angel's Acres and the Archbishop presented the Medal of St. Paul, the highest award the Archdiocese has for a lay person to Maureen for her extreme dedication to her church. What an honor. Maureen's main concern was her Christian faith, her church, her husband, her children, and her grandchildren. She always told her children to be kind to everyone, to be polite and treat everyone with kindness and be joyful. This is what a Christian is all about. When Maureen was in her last couple of days, the family noticed that she had a fragrant aroma and a glow about her. And also the grandchildren were asking why was their oil on her face. I could really say that Maureen was reflecting what the All Saints communities or should be. She was a mother, not only to her children and family, but also to the community. She was graceful, faithful to the Lord, generous to everyone, and very respectful. And this is what she's taking with her as she's going to meet her creator. I would uh, like to thank His Eminence, our Metropolitan, who honored me to say these words for Maureen. Both Presbytera and I respected, loved, and honored Maureen. The family is grieving her loss. The All Saints, Paris, and Kennersburg have lost in this life a special member, a friend, a caring, kind, and good example of goodness. And we pray and hope that her legacy be found always in our family and the community of the All Saints. May her memory be eternal. May she be received in paradise, and may the Lord comfort 
the grieving hearts of her husband Michael, the children, Angel and Mikey, the spouses, the grandchildren, and all in the family. Amen. Last time I held Maureen by the hand. I can tell you, she has the best. Everything about Maureen was the best. He said it wholeheartedly, and he said it throughout his life. I, I will always carry with me the intensity of their love for me. it should be. You know, when I perform marriage services, I like to draw from the scripture that is read in wedding services in the Orthodox Church that describes the miracle of the turning of the water into wine at the marriage in Cana in Galilee. And I call attention to the fact that when Christ provides more wine for the celebrants at the wedding and the steward of the feast tastes the wine, he responds by saying, most men serve the best wine first and then when the guests are too drunk to notice, they slip in the cheap stuff but you have saved the good wine until now. And I like to challenge the couple and say, I hope and pray that to the, your last day, you'll be able to look at each other and say, yesterday was good, today is better, tomorrow will be better still. You have saved the good wine until now. And every day, your life and your love gets richer. And I do feel that was the case with Michael and Maureen struck me was that neither complained. They endured this. I, I love a, 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 a line from a poem by William Blake, a, a great uh, English poet of the early 1800s. He said, we are put on this earth for a short space that we may learn to bear the beams of love. And I love that because beams can be either beams like the beam of a cross, that we may learn to bear the burden of love. It could be beams like the beams of the sun, beams of light, that we may learn to endure the beauty that is God, that we may find space in ourselves that is not about us, but about the other and about God. And that takes time to acquire that openness and that clarity. And I think Maureen, especially in her last years, was learning to bear the beams of love, the beams of her own family's love. The woman who had served was being served. That's a humiliating thing for a server to be on the receiving end. You're bearing the beams of love. You're letting others love you as you love them. You know, when something like this happens, when a good person dies young, the minister just feels he has to apologize for God. He has to come up with some sort of an excuse. Why do the good suffer? And I frankly have to say I don't know. I just know that the best suffered, Christ suffered, and that those who are closest to Christ suffer too because they know that suffering doesn't separate them from God. Sin separates us from God. Suffering doesn't do that. Suffering makes us closer with other sufferers. Suffering makes us more godlike. So he gave Maureen the suffering she could bear. 
she could bear a lot. Also, I think there's some mystery into, uh, obviously, I mean, God, forgive me, of course, you know what you're doing. But, you know, the fact that Maureen had, there was a week for people to gather and tell her how much they loved her. And the family was together with, around her. How much, what a beautiful thing to have your family come and just say, I love you, we love you, we love you, we love you. And then showing love for each other. How much did that, how much joy did that bring to her? When I came and, and uh, read the prayer for the separation of soul from body, and I had my stole over her, and I, I had, I believed that she was beyond realizing what we were doing, but I knew that in her heart she would be grateful for this permission to die. I was holding her hand, Michael was holding her hand, I was saying the prayer, and as I came to the end of the prayer, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, she moves her right arm, as if she wants to cross herself. Down but not out, she heard, and she was responding from a very deep place. And that, that she is in that deep place now, and, and we're frustrated because we can't access her loving presence like we used to. We can't turn to her and talk to her and bring her our joys and sorrows and, and, and kiss her and thank her and hug her. And that's a loss. We, that's a, I, I, I don't want to minimize that. But she lives in our hearts. She lives in our memories. And she lives in the kingdom. And she's always accessible to us. And she has good company. How many people have I buried from this church? I'm getting tired of that, frankly. I'm, I'm going to ask you not to die from this point forward. But in fact, I don't have the power to do that. And part of the purpose of the funeral service is to remind all of us that this is where we're heading and to get our lives in order and to become better people, become loving people. When you heard the sing what we were singing today, we weren't singing for Maureen so much. We weren't saying, God, be merciful to Maureen. We were giving, we were speaking on her behalf. We were saying, be merciful to me, O Lord. We were, we were praying Maureen's prayers. And in that, we were expressing solidarity because we're all heading there. and We all want God's mercy. So Maureen is just a little further along the tracks than we. The funeral service calls to our attention what matters, what abides. We talk about gold and silver and, and the fuss of parties. There's all sorts of references in the hymns to the stuff of life that can distract us. But it asks us to come back to the one thing needful. I, too, will always remember Maureen in an apron. In fact, I sort of thought she might be that way today. But she is dressed in dignity. She is an arjondisa. Her husband, Michael, is an archon of the church. That means it's a name that means something like a nobleman. But we don't have yet, sadly, an order of arjondises in the church of noble women. Maureen, whether or not she was given that title, she was an arjondisa of the church, a noble woman. I'm going on and on because I want to prolong the inevitable, but I have to wrap things up just to say that I'm richer for having known Maureen in the 13 years I've been here. The metropolis is richer. It was thanks to Maureen's generous gift that we're moving out of Pittsburgh to a higher place, a more accessible place, a place that will enrich our ministries, and that was because of her generosity in giving us property that she had inherited from her family. So I will always have cause to remember her with gladness. And whenever I go to, to work, 
I will thank God for my Maureen. We are put on this earth for a short while that we may learn to bear the beams of love. Maureen is enduring, is, embar- is bearing the beams of God's brilliant love. Now unto the ages of ages. Amen. Your Eminence, we thank you, and brothers in Christ, we thank you as well. We need to do something a little bit different today. And so we're going to ask the Narthex Committee to please release you to come and pay your respects to Maureen, and then immediately get into your vehicles. We're asking that you not greet the family at this time. We, We have a time clock we need to meet as far as the cemetery and then downstairs. So if you'll come forward as you're released by the Narthex Committee, and pay your respects, and then uh, the family will greet you at the luncheon, or the, thank you, Philip, the Macaria downstairs. So Philip and his staff from Solons will turn, Maureen, so that you can pay your respects, and then we'll all move to our vehicles. <laughs>